Hello, it is Lakesh. Lakesh, welcome. I'm good, how are you? I am very well. What is it that you would have me do for you today? <laughs> I heard it somewhere. Um, so I um, wondered if um, there are any developments um, in, uh, you know, re relevant to, to our planet, if you know any news. I, I spoke to you maybe a long time ago, so since then maybe something new happened. Very many new things are happening. Well, of course, you have your volcanoes and your earthquakes and your weather and all those things. However, remember the planets have aligned all on one side of the sun. Uh, that is something new on, in your solar system. And that has caused even greater earthquakes and volcanoes. But um, the other thing that has been discovered is not on your planet is a green comet, but it's really not a green comet. It is a, it's a spaceship with three individuals in it, but uh -huh. they expect it as a green comet. Your people have already discovered it, and they see the people inside. They said there is three dots inside of this great uh, comet, but those are three individuals. Um, thank you. I'm specifically interested in uh, exopolitics, like what parties are involved, what's, uh, what do they have their plans, and any of that sort. Oh, your people are so unpredictable. But um, let me tell you this. Uh, there is a lot of uh, frightened countries out there because of your president. He is a very oh, uh, much I'm sorry, I, you didn't understand my question. Exopolitics, no, not... Not, not, not inner politics, but exa, outside oh, of the earth. Outside of your countries. Outside of the surface. What's, who is involved outside? Oh, many. Well, first of all, you have that, uh, the galactic government, of course. Then you have the blue Pleiadians. But what is it that you want to know? There What's is new? I mean, what, what changed in the last year? What has changed? You have greater yeah. amount of people watching your planet. You have greater involvement from other, uh, other species. There are those that are trying to make contact right now that have never made contact before. Then you have the Wasadraka. The Wasadraka is a very high dimensional enemy of yours. And they are trying to make inroads to your planet uh, through... Uh, through the uh, blue avians and creator beings that are out there. And, um, but as far as um, politics, you have a group of people from your planet that want greater abilities and greater freedoms, and they want to speak to the galactic governments about this. Ah, that's interesting. So, yes. They want, since they believe that they are um, more qualified and are creator beings that are on earth or angelic beings on earth, they feel that they have a greater jurisdiction. And oh, got it. Mm -hmm. they, they are not being granted any special, um, any specialties because it, it would really not be fair to the people of earth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, like, uh, Gurk Fitnir seems to be not moving anywhere, is, is it? No, they are remained, they, they're, they're remaining status quo. Uh-huh. But they are still opening up their doors to everyone who wants to visit the colonies. Uh -huh. For uh, the specific pur purpose of helping in whatever way they are allowed to help? Uh-huh. Remember there was a time when uh, we were expecting the, the first contact any day, and there was a time when we were expected, expecting to be visiting the colonies and some sort of action in that direction. That's right. And but it did not happen because the people of the governments of your planet said no. Uh-huh. 
they stopped all positive forward motion with that in some ways. There's still positive motion, but it's not like it was. Uh -huh. And in the past, there was a lot of abductions. Did they kind of calm down? There is much fewer? There's many fewer abductions, yes. Hmm. So basically, the context is instead of expanding, it's sort of decreased in, 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 this, in this direction. I guess there is many more channelers these days, but, but other than channelers, I don't see much contact happening. There's a lot of uh, visual sightings. There's a lot oh, of uh -huh. being seen. There's a lot of people talking about uh, the, the sightings that they see and different things of that nature. Uh, so disclosure is happening, but at a more uh, general, in a more general way. So it's happening from many places. Many people are looking for disclosure from one great big source, but that's not going to happen. It's going to happen from many smaller sources. And oh, so I see. Uh -huh. it's, it's uh, educating the people on a more local level. That's how right. it has to be done. Because if it was a grand scheme and one great big episode, many people would say that it was a hoax or it was not real or whatever. And they need to be educated on the local level so that they understand that this is really real. So disclosure is happening in a more personal way with people on your planet. It is the only way that people will understand that it's really true, is if it's something close by, something in the neighborhood, something that they experience maybe for themselves or somebody very close to them is experiencing. So it's disclosure is happening in a smaller ways, but more permanent ways. Right. Uh -huh. Um, I see, uh, I see some people speak galactic languages and then translate, um, what's the mechanism of that? The mechanism is that they want people to learn galactic languages because uh -huh. it will be helpful for first contact and they uh -huh. do believe first contact will come within your lifetime. The thing is about this, they do not give the interpretations right away. The reason why they are not doing that is they want them to get to hear the language, to become familiar with the sound of it and how, how it differs from other languages. And then they will give them the interpretation. The, and the way they're working it is very different than you would learn languages from your planet. It is that they give the language, then as you think about the language, you can speak it. You can speak it as you think it. Does that make sense to you? And then, right. uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, but the interpretation will be that whenever these aliens, whoever they will be to come first, I believe they will be Yugil, will speak to the human people in their languages, they will be able to hear that in their head and the brain and the way that the download is given will help interpret it. So they actually don't have to learn the language. It's a download and it will be give the interpretations and the language itself will be uh, interpreted through the download. Uh huh. So, is there like every time someone speaks a language, is it someone on the other side uh, participating, or is it, or no, or not? Not always. No. Uh -huh. Sometimes it is the download that is speaking, that which was put into the brain and opened up. That may be speaking, and that may be messages that have already been recorded and put into the brain. Now, uh -huh. some of these are messages that are interactive. If some, a new species is out there that do not have downloads within human beings' brains, then they will actually send their 
uh, language and information and have it interpreted right there. So both is happening. You have the downloads happening and you have people speaking through others that are sensitive enough to get the languages and then they are interpreted. So suppose um, it is the case when you are like really like there is someone on the other side. Uh, how does it work? How do they plug into you? Because it happens that, you know, uh, at specific times you decide to speak and, um, and then you invite them. So what, what, how do they plug in? Well, you have to be a channeler for them to plug in in that uh -huh. way. If it's not a download and they're just sending their messages through their technology, then a channeler must pick that up or the channel areas must pick that up because it is the only way they can do it other than the download. Uh, have, you, have you been doing this like in the past? Uh, are you also involved in the sending languages to people? No, not really. Our language is not really sent to anyone. No one's really requesting our, the, the small blue Pleiadian uh, language. A few people have it. I think our government's approved maybe eight or 10 downloads, but not very many. Uh -huh. So um, there are a few that do have downloads of our language, which is fine. And they do can speak the small blue Pleiadian language, but there are not that many. Yeah, in my book, I called you guys Creatorian because you gave us the name Creator. Uh, so that's fine. You are Can now I listed as Creatorians. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, can you speak a little bit of Would our you? language? Yeah, well, there, Jim, yes, sir. Uh, there's many. There's three planets. And okay. there's three different colloquial vision, colloquial legends of the language. Uh, I cannot say that word. It's, I think it is colloquialisms, yes. Yes, that's it. And uh -huh. there's many different colloquialisms of that, of our language. But the one that I speak is this one. I'll give you an example. Let, let me try. How our yak talk, the hand gang, Makti, Yat Yak, or a chicken, Yad Hada. I don't think it, it was the same language. I think it went so, something different. Yes, it went to an, a more Octorian sounding language. <laughs> but that's all right. Yet Yak what? Yet Yak Hada. Let's try the next planet, I guess. The next planet's colloquialism is slightly different, but still similar. That's a little better. Thank you. I think you spoke several <laughs> Chinese words there. <laughs> it, but that is all right. There were a few that were ours and a few that were Chinese. <laughs> um. I mean, that's, that's kind of, for me, a way to step out, not to step in. Yeah. I, 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 oh, I, yes, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's try the next one. Mm -hmm. And there's one more I'll give you. Uh -huh. Let me see if I can. It's not one that I speak very often, so bear with me. <laughs> Very, very busy. 
No, I'm switching back to my language. Yeah, I'm switching to my language. I can't do anything. Yes. It's for you Ruda. For you already. Says the Torava. Says the Torava. Says the Ruda. Hayana, the Kisana, the Tokraya, Kachita, Kulaya, Hana, Kutta, Marahaya, Tana, Tumana, Hana, Alama, Hana, Hana, Hana. You have your. Uh, yeah, there. I would like to, uh, maybe in a few minutes, I would like to invite someone speaking my language so I would actually. Can well, can practice I, my language and so, but before think, that, let's let's continue talking a little more. All right, you're actually closest to Octorian. Thank you, huh? Some of the some of the Octorians have a very Chinese sounding language. Huh. So yes, uh -huh. that's where I would see that you would fit in easiest. Uh huh. <coughs> with the Octorian language. It's so our next... The Zaza. Yes. So the next question was about the telepathy. I'm uh, uh, now brainstorming um, technology-assisted telepathy, basically synthetic telepathy, technology-assisted telepathy, which is another way of saying uh, technology-assisted natural telepathy. So the people would still use natural telepathy, but but uh, they will uh, use uh, some uh, some sort of electricity, electromagnetic sound, uh, some waves to to get into proper state and activate proper brain centers, and more importantly, to synchronize two people or more than two people to each other, so they can actually get easier into telepathic connection. So you, I invite ideas in that direction. Well, if we started that way, it, there was those that could not get telepathy. They were put, they put implants in them so that when <coughs> the <coughs> words were sent to them, the implant picked them up. <coughs> That's one way we did it. Um, but I see that you want to do a synthetic form and you do not have that kind of technology available to you. So you would have to do it uh, with resonations and vibrations. Um, there are portions of the brain that do understand and do pick up on the tele telepathic thoughts to some extent because you are the early stages of your evolution. What you have to do is tap into those vibrational areas in the brain that already pick that up and bring, the, bring it into clarity, fine tune it, if you will, because the brain already has the ability to do telepathy to some degree. It just needs fine tuned. Uh-huh. Like specifically, what kind of technologies would you think will be beneficial for synchronizing the people? Well, nothing that you have. Let me think <laughs> of anything that, uh, that might be available to you that might work for you. Uh -huh. That's a little harder. That means I have to go backwards in my thought process. But let me do that for a moment. Because I know that the temple areas, do you notice that they're, uh, at the temple areas, there, it's very sensitive there and soft. Those are the uh, those are the telepathic areas. Uh huh. Huh. So you would have to work with the temple areas from the temporal lobe, and this is where um, well, re the recep the receptors are there in the temporal lobe. Okay, um, so I'm thinking about sound and light and electricity. That's basically what we have. We have also, uh, yes. in addition to light, we have all other frequencies. Like you, uh, ultraviolet is very interesting. I was wondering if uh, soft natural ultraviolet would would be would be helpful for synchronizing. Yes, um, 
the different energies and waves that you know of as humans would be helpful. Just as plants and animals pick up on the waves naturally, so do humans. So all you have to do is find a way to separate them into color schematics. Why? But because then they would be able to know which rays they are uh, observing in their head. Oh, I didn't think about um, communication through those waves. I was thinking about synchronizing people using waves. Ah, well, I was thinking that you could communicate with them. Um, if you separate them and uh, the brain knows how to separate those different uh, waves, which it does in some ways, uh, because it helps growth and it, they are actually <coughs> carriers of vitamins and things of this nature. It is difficult for me to go back to that kind of a scenario. Hold on. Yes. Yes. You must understand that this is the most basic telepathy. Okay. We have haven't had that for hundreds of years. Uh-huh. What is the tools that you will be working with? Electricity? Um, yeah, I was just thinking about uh, synchronizing people somehow. So I give them a pulse of sound, which was like, like playing the music so they hear it at the same time. Have flashes of light, friendly flashes of light, which would synchronize their brain patterns, brain wave patterns. So they would come into synchronization and oh, then... This is what you do then. Listen, to, listen carefully. Get a group of people, but separate uh -huh. them into groups of two. Uh -huh. The two of them uh, look at the color purple, say. Let's uh -huh. use that as an example. Both of them are using the color purple. And they are memorizing it and using it to send back and forth to each other. The color purple. Use uh -huh. one one color between the two of them and then randomly after that in a in a test later have them send that color purple to each other at a random time and see if they receive it because if they both work together with one color with one symbol one thought process then they will both uh, unite vibrationally with that particular color item or I or thing and will be able to use that in their basic telepathy with one another for they learned it together they are synchronized together when they are doing it they're sending it back and forth and then later they may get a glimpse of purple when the other sends it uh-huh uh-huh got it so my idea was, um, like, what, what you say is very helpful for people who don't have technology. Now, I have a device which is uh, designed for, for uh, bringing uh, someone in a meditative state using um, light and sound. So they have uh, headphones uh, and um, uh, goggles with uh, some friendly, flashing, beautiful patterns. Yes. So that kind of causes some sort of meditative state by in training the, the brain waves. Yes. Now, I was, I was thinking if I split the output of this device into a pair of goggles and pair of headphones, two pairs of goggles, two pairs of headphones, basically to put two people in the same pattern of excitation, yes. uh, technical, technical synchronization. So they would be, uh, their brain, brain waves would be entrained and synchronized it together so they would be yes, able to is, that is exactly what must be done is uh -huh. the brain patterns must be locked together yes 
locked, yes. And then a uh, second idea was that uh, one is the sender. Suppose one of, the, of them is the sender, another one is the receiver. Like, with, like some person has to send the message. And it's really hard to focus on your message. Some people are good in focusing and some people sort of, their mind drifts away. They can't really send a coherent message because they think about many things at the same time. Why don't so you send people that are good at focusing then and you put them in your experiment? Only use those that are good at focusing. Uh -huh. So I had an idea how to overcome it by uh, sending the, so only the sender will receive the, the message to be sent out and this message can be played in the headphones and it can be played in the visuals so they will be actually like watching something they have to send out and um, and that should kind of train them in a better uh, to help them to to remain focused on the message well why and, did why did this remember with the goggles they they're they're together with their own they're seeing the same thing at the same time, correctly? Is that correct? Oh, no, the next improvement was to add a message to only one of them. So one of them would have um, additional, additional message. They would have similar right. patterns, plus one of them would have a message. But first of all, you must get them on the same track. Uh -huh. Give them the exact same information for at least five minutes. Uh -huh. And then send a separate message after that. After they have combined themselves together, or they become in the same vibrational pattern. Uh -huh. Then you send the message in. Right. And then to, to, uh, to uh, magnify the effect, we might have, instead of one sender, we might have four senders. And I wonder what pattern should they, uh, should they be organized? I mean, would, do they have like form a cross around the, the person or should they be like uh, in one line? I, we can play with that, I guess. Yes, you can play with that. It's also, I could give you an idea that you have four parts of one item and each person is sending a part and uh -huh. see if they can put the items together from the four different pieces. Uh-huh. That now will that, be harder, that, but yes, it's possible. That's, advanced. that's a little more advanced. Our people could do it easily, but I don't know if your people could do it yet. Uh, next idea was, can we somehow link the people um, technically together so the message is transmitted through some sort of a medium? Um, I was thinking, I mean, you know, in, in the movies, we often have helmets which would magnify their telepathic abilities. Can you yeah. kind of comment what, what, what kind of helmet would, would you make using primitive technologies? Well, you have to, it has to link to the temporal lobes. Uh -huh. So it would be something that would be in the, that area of stimulation, but okay. it would also be with the pineal gland and the third eye. So keep that in mind. I am not sure what kind of technology you would use exactly for humans, but it would have to link to the temporal lobe, the pineal gland, and the third eye. I was uh, asking not about excitation of uh, the brain, but about transmittance of the signal. So suppose the brain is sending some sort of a signal physically, like through some sort of a wave. And yeah. uh, I was thinking that suppose you put a person uh, in the water, the signal might be transmitted much better. And now suppose you change the uh, chemical composition of the water and the signal might go even better. And then if you make the water alive so suppose like uh, um, a whale swallows two people and they're inside of them inside of a whale that would be inside of the lean being so i think in that situation that the telepathy should increase strongly you get the it idea would, it seems uh, i cannot follow that line of thought actually but oh. i can tell you that it does make some sense yes my, my idea is that uh okay uh Suppose they start eating a snake from two different sides and the snake would serve as a, as a telepathic connection. So they would, the, the snake would uh, transmit the, the waves from one brain to another. Yes. Uh-huh. 
Uh, that, maybe it's not a snake, maybe a big cucumber. So two people just start eating a big cucumber from two different sides. And, and cucumber works as a living water connection to transmit the, the brain waves from one brain to another. Yes. The, the, it would have to be treated so that they both could receive the same kind of energy uh, from that particular vegetable or that particular... Uh -huh thing it has to be treated so it's working with that part of the brain that's receiving the information i have heard that um mycorrhizal network which is a mushroom network underground uh is uh, very smart and uh, they have uh, proper microtubules to transmit the signal not nerves but microtubules yes so i wonder if uh, we can grow some sort of mycorrhizal network which would fill the helmets and the connection between the helmets. So maybe uh, imagine, uh, say, uh, a big bed with, uh, which is filled with mycorrhizal network and then uh, somewhere within the bed there is a, a place for the human body to just kind of dive in and lay on the back. And the head is surrounded by, uh, by the roots of the mycorrhizal network. So, this could be like an ideal telepath telepathic connector, so the, the network would connect the transmission. These ways are very new to me, but I understand where you're going with it. A very, that's a very interesting thought process. I, ag I agree that that network would be helpful. Uh, uh -huh. And it, they could probably uh, connect to different places in the brain other than the temporal lobe as well. They could probably uh, connect to the excitement areas such as the hypothalamus or the in, uh, areas in the amygdala. So it would be interesting to see what gets excited from these different uh, stimuli. I see that uh, because the cerebral cortex has the four lobes um it could even be visual so you the occipital lobe might be very important in your experiment ah got it um another thought was um uh, actual um uh, actual more technical uh, telepathy well it's more not, not not as natural but more technical um uh, I don't know, the border between them is kind of blurred now, but um, suppose we somehow, uh, yeah, try to extract the message from the brain and amplify it using technical amplifier. Yes. How and, are you going to extract it? Oh, yeah, so you, I, I, I don't want to... You have to know where that thought is in the brain for you to extract the thought. So make it something that is that you know in the brain where that thought originates such if it's excitement you know it's in the, the thalamus or hypothalamus or if it's <coughs> visual it's in the occipital lobe <coughs> if it's motion that it's in the parietal lobe or parietal lobe i, I was thinking about uh, actually <laughs> plugging through the peripheral system like uh, the the palms and the feet and the solar plexus and this and the belly because I think a lot of uh, information can be easily accessed through from there like would be easier to access from there ra rather than try to go through the skull ah yes very good very basic responses because when when I do Reiki I um, put my hands on the, on the skull of the person and I can read their mind more or less, not too much, but I can read the, the, major, uh, the major things. I don't know if it is direct or maybe it's just me um, getting into resonance with the person and I get indirectly, but you know, if it can be assisted by technology, that would be interesting. Yes, those you're attaching to the um, what is it? The, the, stimu the, the most recent stimulus in the brain is on the outer edges of the mind. 
uh, the things that they are most concerned about, the things that are in their brain at the moment, that is what you connect to because that is what is vibrating to the surface. It is intuitive, of course, but it is also part of the natural communication of a human being. They want you to know how they feel. Most people want you to know and be able to tell how they feel so they can heal better. Especially in a healing situation, they want people to know who they are and how they feel. And so they send this information to you. Uh huh. So you so are the, able to receive it through the temporal lobes. Uh -huh. But the next, it, go ahead. Go ahead. So the next question is um, a specific on DNA. So I would. Uh, wonder if maybe you could uh, invite one of the experts, I know, from anywhere to advise on that. But I will run it by you first, and then maybe someone else could expand. So um, the main question is, so as I understood today, it's very fresh, but there are two systems of uh, vibrations in the brain. One is electric through the nerves. It's called action potential electric. Yes. Electro actually, it's electrochemical, electrophysiological. That's you know the proper word is electrophysiological. It goes through outside of the nerve, and it is um, uh, th through neur neural membrane. It goes through neural membrane uh, electrically. That's the basic basis for our um, neural net. Neural net, yes, the basis for our physical connection to the physicality, like action, movement, um, uh, sensation visual, audible, all, all of that goes through um, electrophysiology. Yes. Yes, In yes. addition to that, we have uh, microtubal resonances, which is within the nerves and outside of the nerves, which is the basis for, I think, um, acupuncture, aura, etheric body, Reiki. So all of that is through microtubules. Yes. And um, in addition, there is, there is like... Um, Another vibration, which is within the nucleus, out. So within, each neuron has a head, like a body, and mm -hmm. within the body there is a nucleus. In the nucleus there is DNA. So it's it's not exactly uh, the neuro neurons are very long. Like they could go from the, from the spine to the hand. It's one neuron. So in the spine there is a, a body uh, of that neuron, and there is the DNA there, and also in, in the brain there is lots of heads of the neurons, and the the axons reach out very far. So Within the nucleus, there is DNA, and I think uh, there is, um, it also participates in thinking, but, but I would say it's a little bit remote from the action. So yeah. the, con the consciousness, exactly. yes. where is the consciousness? I guess it is in, uh, uh, <laughs> it could be in, in the DNA, it could be in microtubules, it could be in uh, neuronal, neuronal, neural electrophysiology. And it also can be elsewhere and just uh, enter through different uh, uh, different paths. Yes. So, if it just if you want to plug into the uh, te technologically plug into the thoughts of the person, we want to read them and uh, write them. Where should we plug in? That's the question. Okay. It's, what are you trying to say, or, or just any kind of plug? There are several different ways to plug in. First of all, you can plug into the DNA. The DNA sends a message. You're right that it doesn't do the action, but it sends the message to the computer, which is the brain, and the brain carries out the functions and sends the information to the areas that need to perform the actions. The brain is the, the, uh, the centerpiece, the, is the main area where all the, inter, uh, all the things are done from. Let's, uh, let's clarify the terminology because the DNA is also in the brain. You cannot say that it sends it to the brain outside. It's not the, it is with part, the DNA is not the active part of the brain. The, these functions that you speak of from the different parts of the brain are the actions, the electricity, the chemical reactions, the energy reactions, etc. Those are the functioning part of the brain. 
I don't know. I, I disagree. I think you're mistaken. I, I don't think the think DNA so. makes a lot of work and thinking. It's it has to. It, it has no way around. It cannot just it control it from afar. From afar. It brings the information to the brain, but it does not do the actions. Uh, I mean, it could be an interface, but it's an important interface between uh, outside consciousness and. Uh, uh, why do you think it, there is, why do you think the brain exists? If if the if the DNA was the active component, it would not need the brain to do all these different things. Oh, but the, the brain. brain I mean, DNA is in the brain. The brain consists of neurons, and and uh, neurons have the the the. It's bringing the information in and telling the brain what needs to be done. The the DNA is telling every everybody what needs to be done. It is the manager. It is not the the worker. (laughs) But what I'm saying that it's still located in the brain. Yes, of course, it has to be. Uh, and uh, it, it, interfaces, to... it interfaces with the neurons and interfaces with the etheric body and, and some it other tells bodies. everybody what to do. It tells everything what to do. It is the manager. It is in the brain. It tells everybody what the message is. This is the message. You carry it out. You take it through here. You take it through there. You... Um, uh, uh, bring this to there. It is the manager. The DNA is the manager, but not the the worker. Okay. So uh, one of the opportunities is for telepathy is to speak through the manager, right? If, yes. if the worker is dumb, then you just ask them to call the manager. Correct. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, so um, so. I think it's it's easier to communicate to the DNA because it is very specific. Of so course. we have lots of lots of noise in the system. Like everybody, like billions of people are sending their waves, and the way to tune into the waves of specific person is uh, could be through the DNA because DNA is very specific. Yeah. It has the, That's the correct. barcode. The barcode. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and, I agree and, with that. And we can synthesize the DNA. Um, very easily. I mean, small amount, small, small, short fragments we can synthesize very easily. Of course. So we can possibly take the DNA from the person, uh, take uh, key fragments from there, specific yeah. to that person, and synthesize them, put them in the helmet, and uh, uh, activate to send the specific patterns. And uh, also, if the person is sending the signals, we can read the structure of this DNA basically mm, roughly the temperature of this DNA and, uh, and read, uh, read the, the, the patterns that come out. Correct. That sounds very logical. Very logical, huh? Uh-huh. But uh, my, my main question is what kind of... Um, so I, I assume the different levels of uh, consciousness and different levels of mind would be pertinent pertinent to specific chemicals like like uh, physical activity would be more like per- pertinent to uh, electrophysiology um, health would be more related to uh, microtubules so what would be the DNA's part of the of the consciousness and the mind do you know yes it w- receives the information like I said, it receives and it is the manager. It receives that information and puts it where it needs to go. And then the workers do the job. So maybe some, some information doesn't even reach the DNA because I know some of the neural transmission can play like uh, on the skin without even reaching the, the spine. It would be like from one piece of the skin to another. But DNA is still involved with that. Ah. So it would like know everything? The DNA is what is how you are made. It is part of everything that is you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It, you cannot have a part of the body that is not connected to the DNA. It is impossible. Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of, uh, so there is some, some, uh, uh, something about blood, something special. 
It has uh, its own character. It's very fluid. It has, relatively fluid. It yeah. has uh, DNA in it in, in lymphocytes. And uh, I wonder mm, if you talk to the blood, what, what story would it tell? It would tell you of um, what it needs to do to keep the system alive. You see, it has the oxygen, it has the white blood cells, it has the red blood cells, it has many different things in it. That uh, It has the plasma in it as well. The, all these things are things that keep the body in, uh, alive. Not necessarily, they are not the intellectual part of the system, but they are a part of the system that must be, uh, the, the DNA must uh, tell it what to do. All right. And to uh, go with each part of its existence and essence. Uh, here is a good idea. We just came up. Um, we have acupuncture points, which are connected to some areas of the brain and connected to some organs. Yes. So maybe to uh, send the visual information or read the visual information, read the visual information from the brain, we can um, connect to the, to the acupuncture points Absolutely. related to the eyes. To the if eyes. you That's know exactly where to go, you can do this, yes. Hmm. All right, and if you want to uh, activate the temples, you might work on the temples or you might work on acupuncture points which are connected to the temples. Hmm. Correct. I, I just don't want to, to harm anyone, so we might want to, to start a little bit uh, softer. Of course, but there are many ways to get to the brain, but there's, it's difficult if you don't have the right equipment to get the information out of it that you need. The thing is, if you know where to go in the brain, if you know what to access, then you will get the information you need. You understand that I know that you, you're you not one that uh, totally believe, believes that the brain has, uh, different parts of the brain have different functionalities, but it is true that it does. So if you go to the right part of the brain, the speech area or the, the area with uh, movement and or the area that has excitement or the area that has visual, you will be able to get what you need from there in your experiments if you're dealing with that part of the brain. Oh, here's an interesting question. Um, suppose somehow the DNA uh, stops um, its communication. I don't know, in chemistry we somehow we are able to block things temporarily. So suppose you took some drug which would silence your DNA, like partially silence, the kind of uh, slower its vibration for, for like for, for like with DMT you slow it for a minute so suppose like a DMT analog would slow the vibrations of the DNA for a minute and then return it back how the, would the consciousness and the thinking change during that time if you remove the DNA from the from the picture if you slow down the DNA everything will slow down with it because it is the manager it will see that the DNA is acting normal. It will see no change. It will act as if the, everything is normal. And then when it comes back to normal, it will not know that there had been any change at all. Like in Russia, there are like people get drunk often. So it's not unusual for a manager to get drunk for a week. And somehow the, uh, the departments, their departments learn how to work even without the manager. Of course. That's what I'm so, saying. If you uh -huh. slow the DNA down, all the rest of the body will believe that everything is normal because the DNA says it is. Uh-huh. So would the yeah. thinking change yeah. at all? What? Uh, like, I, I, I assume, so my question was, maybe intuition will be like, slowed down. Because some days you have lots of intuition, some days you kind of feel dumb and there is no, no messages coming. Is it through DNA? Not necessarily. You have all kinds of things within you that causes different reactions in the body, mind, and spirit. It could be spiritual that is 
causing you to be mentally uh, unstable for that day. But remember, they are all connected in some ways. The DNA is not connected to the spiritual as much as it is to the physical, but it does, uh, uh, it is affected by it for absolutely. Like uh, yesterday was the full moon and it yeah. was uh, overwhelming uh, many things. It was uh, really hard to think clearly. I was too, too many messages at once. And uh, also I noticed that during the day where it's too much sun, even if I'm closing the curtains and I'm uh, in air conditioned room, I still cannot think clearly, but there is too much interference. And at night, like in the evening, there is a uh, much clearer uh, thinking. So I wonder which of the systems is affected. Well, sometimes the DNA as a as the manager decides what part of the day is most uh, beneficial. And you can get into habits. Habits are part of what make humans and aliens who they are. So you do talk to your DNA and your DNA talks to you. You can train it to do what you want it to do. You absolutely have control over your DNA if you believe you do. So it is part of your everyday life, everyday existence, and all the things that are you. Uh-huh. Thank you. I have 10 minutes left. I would like to invite um, an angel to give me some angelic language. I wanted to connect it to angelic language. Oh, very thank well. you very much for your um, consultation. It was nice to reconnect with you and um, with your vibration. Absolutely. Have a very good day. Much love you to you. Much and love. Said, if you listen to this again, you will hear some things that will help you. Yes. Uh huh. Much love. Much love.